Hello, Booktube. Um, I am doing um, the Future History Project. It's, it's an Asimov read-along. Read it's an Asimov, a, a long, big Asimov uh, event. Uh, Isaac Asimov that's happening on um, Booktube, and Sean D. Stanfast is heading this. Um, and I'm doing this with uh, one of the other co-hosts is... Um, Mark Richardson from Richardson Reads, me, and Sean Stanfast. We're the ones going to be doing the hosting. Hopefully somebody else can jump on board and uh, do some hosting with us. This is going to be great. I mean, if you're an Asimov fan and you still got some things to read, or if you're an Asimov fan and want to reread some of the Asimov stuff, or all all of the Asimov stuff that is uh, Empire uh, Robot, you know, Foundation stuff, um, then jump on. It's going to be it's going to be all year, I think. Uh, could, I don't know, I don't even know if we'll finish this year. But at the very least, we're going to give it a good shot. Uh, so, and if, and if you got time to read Asimov, then jump jump on board. Um, talk to Sean D. Stanfast and see, see if he, he would uh, like to have another co-host. But first off, I finished three short stories so far this week. Um, I'll be finishing the other two here soon. We're going to be reading five stories a week for the first four weeks. And then I don't. I guess we're jumping into novels after that, uh, starting in February, which is great with me. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Asimov novels, and I'm a big fan of the short stories. I've read a, I've read a lot of this stuff, but I will be rereading um, all of it. So I'm excited about it. Um, but for the first thing I'm reading from is the Complete Robot. I I got this paperback. I can't remember where I found this. I think it was at Goodwill. That I found this for like um, under two dollars, and I was shocked that I found it there. Uh, this isn't hard to find. This is this is not one. This is not a rare book, but I rarely ever find Asimov at the Goodwill. But I found this one there. But it, if you'll see, really cool cover. Um, this is an older cover. It doesn't have this. They don't. I don't. I don't think this cover's in print anymore. But I'm I'm going to talk about the three short stories that I read. <clears throat> the significance. Um, you know what what the matching themes are to every story because every one of these stories, besides having a robot in them, these are robot stories. Uh, besides, ha of course, you know the complete robot. But um, besides having robot stories, have over overarching themes that are overarching. I don't know themes that um, that I think are very very interesting. Um, and, and surprising. I, I didn't expect these all to have the, this many um, themes that, that connected them. So, yeah, very cool. Um, and I'll, I'll say when they were written, wh where they were first published, and all that stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Um, first off, I enjoy these stories a lot <laughs> this week so far. Um, these have been the highlight of my week, my reading week. Um, all three of these stories were... Um, you know, kind of hard hitting in a way, um, and a lot of it is because one of the main themes. I'll go ahead and talk about some of the themes uh, that that connect these stories. One of the main themes, in my opinion, was nostalgia. Um, all of these people are nostalgic for something. In the first story, a boy's best friend, the boy is nostal or the boy wants to keep his his robot dog named named a robot. <laughs> it's Robot Mutt. So, um, I, I found that kind of funny. Uh, the story was written for Boys Life magazine in 1975. Um, <clears throat> and the story starts with a little boy. He's, you know, there, these people live on the moon. The little boy is out running around by himself. He's playing in a crater with, with his, his little robot dog. Um, and his father asks, asks the mother where he is. And she says he's, play, he's playing in the crater with his, with, with robot. And so they go out. Um, and the father goes out to try to find the little boy. He finds him, and uh, and I will be spoiling this story. It's four pages long. I can't spoil this. I can't spoil a 22-page story, which is the next one. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be spoiling the hell out of them. So um, if you can be spoiled for a short story, uh, and and that and that spoils it for you, then you you shouldn't be reading short stories probably. But <clears throat> Um, I really do think that these stories were great, but the father comes out there and sees him playing with his little robot dog and says, 
Um, how about you get a real dog? You know, I have I have a dog picked out for you. We would we would like to get it for you and uh, um, and replace your robot dog. And the little boy's like, but I love I love this one. I lo I love robot and um, totally under you know totally understood. Um, you know the I don't know if it's so much that the little boy doesn't understand the <clears throat> the human canine connection, or if it's that he. Um, he, he's afraid of the change. You know, this is different. This is exactly the opposite from one of the few, one of the stories I want to talk about here in a minute where the father is the nostalgic one and he wants his son to sort of revert to, um, to an older concept, which is human canine connection. Um, this boy loves his, loves his little robot, um, which is a human computer connection, you know, maybe it isn't, maybe it isn't real, but at this point in time, it, during the book, it would be 20 years in the future, I believe it was uh, supposed to be 1995, but, <clears throat> but this, during this time in the book, the little boy doesn't understand that there, that it, it would be a different kind of connection, his, his father does understand that, so I kind of, I kind of get it, but at the same time, I kind of understand the little boy's position. Um, great story. Uh, and, and the story ends with uh, um, nothing happening. It, it's pretty well, it's left up in the air. Um, I like the way that it was left. If, if I, I, don't, I don't need all my stories tied up in little bows and um, told to me, you know, exactly as they are. Let, let me use my imagination a little bit. But that was a wonderful story. It was... <clears throat> tied for my favorite story of the week. My other one was um, Sally, 1953 from Fantastic Magazine. It was it was written in 1953 for Fantastic Magazine, and uh, it was a 22 page story. Um, and uh, in this book, it's a 22 page story. If it's a different volume, it may be maybe a different length, but um, definitely short. Um, but it's about this man who collects cars, and the cars are, you know, the car cars have artificial intelligence. I mean, the cars are intelligent. The cars learn. Um, the cars communicate to each other. The cars communicate to him in certain ways. It's got some strange themes going on. Um, but I still think it's very, very worth reading. Um, just a great story. Um, and, and this story has something, has a theme that I want to talk about that is also in the rest of the rest of the stories and it is forcing things on others um, you know even even if others see it as progress that person may not you know that that person may be afraid of progress and I but but in, in this story I don't think is that he was afraid of progress is that he was afraid of um, change that that hurts others change that hurts things um, you know, th this man comes to visit this old man who collects these cars. He's got 51, 51 cars, and the old man wants to pull the, or, or the the man that comes to visit him comes and wants to pull the engines and, uh, you know, pull the motors out of the cars. And then, of course, they use gasoline because it's a 1953 story, so they don't realize, you know, cars would be electric. <laughs> um, um and that, you know, that would have been the first place a lot, you know, that we would have gone. But, of course, 1953 is completely different. Um, but but it's about... The the story is, is interesting um, in that the man feels a nostalgia that is not... I mean, and these cars were from like 40 years before, I think. And this man feels nostalgia for, for these cars that I'm not sure is healthy. But then we go to the other extreme and we see a man that has no feeling for anyone but himself and his pocketbook. Um, you know, he wants to make money and he wants to pull these, these motors and take these cars and, uh, or take, take these motors because that is the, that is the valuable part of the car. And, uh, but this man has, has a connection. He has a relationship with these cars, especially one of them named Sally. That's what the story is. Um, but yeah, there, like I said, there's some weird things going on there. But um, read it; it's it's a great story. Uh, there's a there's a 
a scene in it I found a little disturbing and I really but but I remember it and it helped me remember the story it was it was this man owns a bus and this bus he um he wired weird um you know well it seems like all the cars have some sort of in this time have some sort of uh um, AI, artificial intelligence, and they have some sort of intelligence. I'm not, I'm not sure it's artificial at this point. Um, but these stories are connected in that you got the little boy, that his father is trying to force something on him. You got this man who's trying to force something on this old man. I'm not going to tell you the, the end of this story. I think, uh, I think it's important to read um, to understand. And then we have the story called a story called Someday, which is about a boy and his bard. Which, in my it, well, the way it sounds to me, in this story, the bard is almost like um, its whole um, its whole existence is to tell stories, and it's an old one. You know, just like in the just like in this, um, his, his father gave it to him. Just like in this story I mean, with the cars, it's old. Um, and, uh, he, he has a friend that takes the piss out of him for it. Um, he thinks it's, it's, um, it should be replaced, um, that he needs to get a new bard, uh, because this bard tells him stories about, about old things, you know, uh, things that don't exist anymore, horses, and, and, I mean, not to say they don't exist, but they don't exist in the same capacity, you know, they're not ridden, they're, if anything, they're used for work, and then I even doubt. I even doubt it. Then I would figure all all they, according to the story, they've probably all been replaced by robots. I mean, um, so. But again, we get that theme. Now, I didn't like this story as well as I did the first two, but I, I thought I thought it was fine. The first within the first two, the the machines, the robots, they had person. They had, sort of had personality, so. So you connected to them a little better. With this, it's just a little storytelling device um, that would have no place today. Because I mean, but they were what they were doing is they were um, feeding books into this, and it was reading the books, and uh, you know they they were doing that later. So we have audio books now on our phones. You know, not, nothing like that. I mean, this was 1975, so I think Asimov had thought of that kind of thing by then. But this was again was written for Boys Life magazine, uh, so it, it fit it would fit perfectly in something like that. But the boy at first balked at getting rid rid of the bard and getting a new, you know, getting a new one that, that would tell him better stories. So what ends up happening is they find a way, or, or they're trying to find a way to get this old machine to tell new stories and while Asimov may not be great at dialogue and um, you know some of his characters may be a little little off his ideas are amazing and and that is the reason I love Asimov as much as I do his ideas and you know and um, the way the way he tells a story and the way he creates a theme um, he does it without great dialogue um you know it, it's not stephen king contrived dialogue but it is contrived um yeah and, and again i said something negative about stephen king you know I, and it's not that i hate stephen king i don't I, I like a lot of his books but um but his dialogue is terrible but anyway um but again this has that theme of forcing something on someone else. Now this this little boy eventually kind of says, "Okay, maybe someday, you know, I will go ahead and and um, replace replace this." But right, but right now it's working fine. You know, it, it's doing what I needed to do because it's it, because now it is reading modern books, and um, so excellent stories. I mean. Um, you know, it, but it, but the story they have a theme of, of about not not adapting, but is the adaptation not happening because things are being forced? You know, if people were to, were to be gentle about this and try to do it over time, you know, it, it would be better. And you know, was he telling a story about about um, you know the what, government or something like that? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm not smart enough to know all that. I don't. I 
I haven't I haven't researched it. Um, not sure I want to uh, because I like to draw my own conclusions here, and these stories leave it easy to to do. And I loved loved these stories. So hopefully, um, some of you out there will go ahead and read this. And, and again, this the book is the complete robot. Um, this is still in print. You can still get this with a different cover. Uh, the book outlet not long ago had some amazing, uh, had an amazing um, Asimov story uh, or Asimov book uh, sale. I think these were like five dollars and something for these things. Um, but I, of course, I didn't get this one. I got this at Goodwill, like I said. And I've got a lot more stories to go. We got fifteen, or I got seventeen more to go because I got two more to read for the week. I'm excited. Um, I'm loving these stories, and I hope I hope more of you will read that. Will read these. They're they're amazing. They're important. Um, yeah, get out there and grab this book. Give it a read. Um, uh, short stories are the perfect place to start with science fiction. Like we said back in New Worlds November, we had a great time in New Worlds November. I wish I had read some of this in New World Worlds November. I would, um, you know, I would have just fell in love with it then, just like I have now. But, yeah, that, that's the first three stories. I got a lot more to go, and I'll have another video this weekend. Probably Sunday, um, I should have another video about the other two stories for the week. Uh, and th those will not be non-human robot stories. They will be, let's see, let's see, immobile robots. So that, he has it broken up like that. So the first ones were non-human robots. The second part are, not, are immobile robots. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I enjoyed talking about them. They're, they're great.